Here we're going to take a look at non-special values, um, all the angles that are not the special ones we've been working with. So in the unit circle so far, we've really been working with these special triangle values, 45 increments of 30, uh, 60. And so we've really only touched on these particular values. And of course, we've done the 90 degree increments as well, which is good and we've developed an understanding of cosine sine and tangent outside of just a triangle and um, now today we're going to fill in all of the gaps so filling in all the gaps in between these spots to have the cosine sine and tangent of any value uh, any angle so let's to start let's take a look at uh, cosine of 0.5432 Okay, we'll get rid of all that there. Uh, where is the cosine equal to, let's see, where is the cosine equal to 0.5432? All right, well, to find an angle, given the ratio, I can use my calculator and I can use the cosine inverse of 0.5432, whoops, and that will give me my uh, angle. It will give me a angle, one angle, 0.5432. So I'll go ahead and type that in my calculator here, and the inverse cosine of 0.5432 is 57.1 degrees. So there I have 57.1 degrees. Okay, well, if I put that on my circle, the cosine of 0.5432, cosine inverse, is 57.1, right about, I don't know, just guess, right about there. So there is 57.1 degrees. All right, well, the cosine of 57.1 is equal to 0.5432, and there is also one other value. And we are going ahead and finding all solutions between 0 and 360. You know, if we didn't do that, we'd be going and doing this forever because you can keep going around the circle however many times you want. And really, there would be infinite angles that have the cosine of 0.5432. So we're only going to find two. So where is the cosine equal to approximately a half? Well, if you look at our our circle here, the cosine is approximately a half there, and if I draw a straight line down, it's also approximately a half down here as well. Okay, what is that spot down there? How do you find that angle measure down here? Well, it's somewhere between 270 and 360 degrees, and if I go ahead and make a reference angle, and we're always making them with the horizontal axis, this right here was a 57 degree angle, okay? And it was a 57 degrees from the horizontal, which was from zero. So that's 57 degrees from zero. So down here is going to be 57 degrees back from the horizontal as well, but we're going to go back from 360 degrees. So we're going 57 back from 360, which gives me a value of 303 degrees. And actually, I went to the nearest tenth, so really it's not 303. It's going to be 302.9. 302.9. Those are the two values in degrees where the cosine of those two values is equal to 0.5432. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Where is the sine negative 0.2104? Well, if we just stop and think about this for a minute, the sine is negative down here. So my values are going to be down there in quadrants 3 and 4. That's where the sine's negative. All right, well, if I use my calculator and find to the nearest degree what that value is, 
I type in si inverse sine of negative 0.2104. I get a value of negative 12.1 degrees. So when I type this into my calculator here, just like so, I type in the inverse sine of 0 0.2104 negative. I get a value of negative 12.1 degrees. Okay. Well, negative 12.1 degrees is 12.1 degrees back from 360. That's somewhere right about here. And if I convert that to positive degrees, that's going to be 360 minus 12.1, which is 349 or 47.9. 347.9. So long as I did that math in my head correctly. 12 plus 47 is 59, and one more is 60. So 347.9. Okay. The other one is in quadrant 3, get rid of that. The other one is across the way in quadrant 3 over here. So that value right there is, now remember, we had a 12 degree reference angle. So that means that degrees right there was 12. So this degree right here is also 12. And we're going from the horizontal. So this is 12 past 180 degrees which is, actually it's 12.1, so it's going to be 192.1. So those are the two values between 0 and 360 where your sine is going to be equal to negative 0.2104. We'll take a look at a tangent one here. Notice the tangent is uh, 5.4318 and you know I've talked before in the past that the biggest value cosine and sine can be is 1 well Huckham tangent can be bigger and that's because tangent is the sine divided by cosine in a unit circle which we can have uh, larger than 1 values so I'll type in inverse tangent of 5.4318 Okay, so we have the inverse tangent of 5.4318 gives me a value of 79.06 degrees. Okay, so that is on my unit circle somewhere up here, 79.6 degrees. Now, this is a little bit tricky, but where else is the tangent positive? And so we found the tangent, remember, to be positive in, let's see here, our tangent is positive in this quadrant right here, and also in the first quadrant and the third quadrant down there. So our value our other value where the tangent is positive is going to come straight across the way down at 79.6 degrees past the horizontal which was 180. So if I add 79.6 to 180 I'm going to get 259.6. See, and my lines, my line is not very good here, but you'll see that, and this kind of should ring a bell vertical angles from geometry, but 79.6 from the zero and 79.6 past the 180. So those are degrees, and on the next page we're going to talk about finding values in radians. So we'll switch gears here. And we'll do the same thing, but we're going to talk about uh, finding these values in radians. So we're going to do a conversion. So where is the sine equal to 0.8933? I will evaluate that in my calculator. 
and I get 64 degrees. I'm going to round to the nearest degree on these. So we'll say this is 64 degrees. Okay. 64 degrees on my circle is somewhere roughly here. So there's 64 degrees. And my sign is also positive straight across the way over here. And this is also 64 degrees, but it's 64 degrees, remember, backwards from the 180. So this is going to be 116. All right, so there's my two answers in degrees. How do I switch these to radians? Well, remember, if you want to convert from degrees to radians, you have to multiply by the conversion factor. And so our conversion factor, if I'm going to go and change an answer in degrees to radians, I need to multiply by radians over degrees. And so once I do that, my degree units will cancel out, and I'm left with radians. Well, our conversion factor, radians to degrees, the best one to use is pi. And how many degrees are in pi radians? 180. So there is my conversion factor to transfer an answer from degrees to radians. So I go back up to the top here. I want to change 64 to degrees into radians. So I say 64 pi over 180. And I reduce if I can, which this one you can chop in half several times. Um, 32 pi over 90. I can chop in half again. That's the same as 16 pi over 45. And so there is a 64 degree angle in radians. 116, you can do the same thing. That's going to be 116 pi over 180, which is the same as, oh, let's see, you can chop that in half, 58 90 58 pi over 90 which we can chop that in half one more time, and we can have 29 pi over 45. So there's my two values in radians. And that would be rounding to the nearest degree from the start. Uh, the next one, cosine of what value is equal to 1.4321? OK, I just. I think I just said that the cosine and sine, the biggest values you can have is 1. So where the cosine would be 1.4 would be somewhere way out here. And that's not anywhere on our circle, is it? And that's because the cosine, a value of cosine of 1.4 is impossible. Why else would that be impossible? Why? When you think about it, why is that impossible? Remember, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay? And you know in a right triangle that the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So that means if my denominator, the hypotenuse, is always the longest side, then that is always going to be longer than the adjacent. So if I have a bigger number on the bottom, so if I have a big number on top, or a small, whatever, big on top but bigger on bottom, always bigger on the bottom, it's always going to be a number between 0 and 1. So therefore, if you have a 1.4321, that would actually be over 1. There's no way the adjacent can be bigger than a hypotenuse, and that's because this is an impossibility. So this one is no solution. It's undefined. If you type that in your calculator, you'll get an error. The last one, then, we'll do a tangent of a negative. We didn't do a negative tangent yet. So we'll say, where is the tangent equal to negative 1.4320? So on my calculator, I'll find that value, tangent of negative 1.4320 negative 55 degrees. OK, 
Okay, and it gives us a value in negative degrees. So that's fine. Negative 55 degrees. Okay, well that's 55 degrees back from 360, so it's somewhere about down here. And I'm going to convert that to positive degrees. That's 305. Okay. The other value where tangent is negative, remember, tangent is negative right here in this quadrant. And it's also a quadrant where the two signs are opposite here in the second quadrant. So my other tangent is going to be straight across the way at... 55 degrees back from 180. So 55 degrees back from the horizontal 180 is going to be 125. Convert those to radians by dividing by 5 after you multiply by pi over 180. So multiply each of these by pi over 180 and then go ahead and reduce. So how many fives are there in 180 degrees? There is 36. So if I divide each by um, five, okay, how many fives? If I reduce this, divide that by five and that by five, this becomes 36. And 125 divided by five becomes 25. And then I think, can I reduce that any further? Um, and I can't. So my final answer there is 25 pi over 36, or 25 36 pi radians. And then over here, if I divide 305 by 5, I'm left with 61 36 pi radians. Okay, so you can find the angle of, you can find the sine, cosine, and tangent of any angle you want, and um, going around the circle, it's not just those special values that you can take cosine and sine of, and this kind of helps to fill in all the gaps. This is how your calculator uh, comes up with one of the values, and then you have to come up with the other one on your own. So thanks for watching, and that's a wrap.